Hi, I'm Kelly Vaughn, and this is Inside Indy. Healing begins at home. It does. Yes, it does here on Inside <laughs> Indy especially. And we have a uh, couple of people in the studio today to tell us how that all happens, the healing process, and why the home part is so important to that process. They are G, Brian Rogers. And what's the G stand for? Because I know you as Brian. Yeah, my dad's name and my name was the same name. That's why we do that. So okay. it's Grady Brian Rogers. <laughs> all right. If you were talking to family, it's Grady Brian. It's all like one word. Grady Brian. You know? <laughs> there I like you go. that. I like that. It's kind of folksy. <laughs> there we go. Uh, he is the co-founder of Chart Properties here in Indianapolis. And then we have Dr. Annette Keenan, who is a prophetess and co-pastor of Christ Our Healer Ministries here in Indianapolis. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Wow, this is this is going to be an interesting program. You do not want to change the channel, okay? Because we're going to teach you so many things about first of all, home ownership and that it's the American dream which can very quickly become a nightmare for so many people. Am am I right? Brian? It's a it's a shame the number of people that could own homes today that don't because they think they can't. Mm, okay. What okay. a disheartening thing. Because like you said, the American dream is for home ownership, which is not true in every country. In every country, they're not looking for necessarily home ownership. I want you to know that. Okay. Because you know, there's okay. some very poor areas right. okay. uh, as you get out into, into other countries. But in the United States, home ownership is what most people want. Mm -hmm. And so many times believe that they cannot do it because they've been told that. So they've never, they, they don't even go there. They don't even go there. Okay. And we are trying to make a difference in that world. And we are making a difference, as you know. Okay. When people come to us and think that they cannot own a home, it's because there's three very discriminated groups of people in our nation today. Okay. And they are? Number one, like you and I spoke about. Because the first thing I'm going to say, females. Right. And you would, and, and, and according to different perspectives, people are going to think that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's not it. Oh, okay. Although females would fit in this category, mm -hmm. the number one discriminated group of people in our nation today, credit reports. Credit reports. People okay. are controlled by a number that's manufactured mm -hmm. by three different companies. None of the three companies ever match their numbers, true? Right. Nobody true. knows how the algorithms that they use to figure that, mm -hmm. yet that number determines if you can get a loan, how much of a loan you can get, if you can live here, if you can live there. It determines everything about life in a financial sense. Even a job, right? Even a job. Right. That credit number can mean so much. And so when you come to own a home at Chart Properties, the last thing we care about is your credit report. Hmm. And so when, I, when you say that, you think, oh my goodness, you must have a tremendous amount of risk factor then. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe so because we base that decision based upon your ability to pay. How much can you take out of your budget and afford to make for a house payment? Then we sell you a home on an agreement from Chart. In other words, you're making that payment to Chart mm -hmm. while Chart's making that payment to whoever we purchased the house home from mm -hmm. while they're making a payment to the bank. So it's a process. Then at the end of that time, after you've lived in this home, you've been making a principal and interest payment to Chart, we have been helping you get your credit number to where it needs to be because we want you to do that. Oh, wow. Because we want you to fit within the system at some point, credit-wise. But you're owning the home the whole time you're doing it instead of trying to get it ready so you can own a home. Right. And then we get you financed with some lender. That lender gives you the money to pay the house off. And then the series goes on down and it all happens all on the same day when that final closing happens. Wow. And so that credit report does not determine your ability to own a home. Okay, so you take that out of the equation. Yeah. Now, now you got a different world. Right. A person can come in and get a home with as little as a 2% down payment. So if they're spending $80,000 on a home, that's mm -hmm. only a $1,600 down payment. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay that to go rent an apartment. Right. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And now you get mm -hmm. to own a home. Wow. What a difference. Wow. Are people aware that that is the barrier? Those who say, I could never get a house, are they aware that it's credit? Are they aware of the other factors? Or they just don't go there at all? They do, are they even... Do they have a clue? I think it's a combination of everything you said. Many times they say, I've never, my parents didn't own a home, so I'm never going to own a home. Mm. And what a rotten shame. And we want them to be able to own a home. And so when they come in, because they see our ad, our, our ad just simply says, for sale by owner, immediate possession, low down payment, credit problems, no problem, trade-ins welcome. So what does that mean? You come in and see a house at 4 o'clock, you might be moving in at 6 o'clock today. 
That's insane. That doesn't happen. And, and actually, it sounds it sounds crazy. Like, how can that be? I would just think that's. How do you convince people <laughs> Kelly. to trust you? Now, first of all, because I want to say something this about is chart properties, because yeah. part of your logo is is scripture, yeah, which is Proverbs, which one? Proverbs three twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. Wow. And it's in our power to help people own homes because of what we do. Mm. And so when they see that ad, they can move in today. They don't have to worry about that credit report, that low down payment. And it might be that somebody has a home they haven't been able to get rid of and they're needing to go up or down in size. Mm -hmm. That's where the trade-ins welcome come in. Trade it in like a used car. Wow. We buy the house from you that day, sell you a house, same day, and you make your move. Wow, incredible. And so that second group are people that are incarcerated. Felons. When, felons. Mm. People come out of incarceration and they're treated like second-class citizens. And we can't do that. 35 million people in the United States are tagged with a felony. Mm. In 1980, there was a half a million people incarcerated in a combination of jails, federal and state prisons. By 2010, almost two and a half million. 500% increase in 30 years. Where would we be with a 500% increase 30 years from now? Wow. We can't afford it. Right. And so we have to do something to drop recidivism. Mm -hmm. And we're reaching out to that group. And so, uh, once again, if you have a felony and you're trying to live in certain places, you can't do it. Right. It's completely legal today in many places for them to be able to say to a felon, you can't live here, you can't move there. So if you go back to look at Martin Luther King's speeches mm -hmm. and you put the word felon in instead of the African Americans that he always said, mm -hmm. the same thing applies. And we have to fix that or recidivism is just going to continue to grow. Recidivism meaning people returning to prison. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that last group, mm. are you ready? Okay. Still blacks, okay. still minority groups, okay. which would include veterans. I was going to go, woohoo, but I don't know if that's something to be happy about. Yeah. Like, we're still on the list though. Okay. Veterans, Latinos, and other groups. Okay. And so we will sell homes to anybody. I want you to understand that. Mm -hmm. But we target our marketing towards people that are fit into those three discriminated groups. Mm, okay. When it comes to uh, discrimination in terms of color, what are African Americans experiencing? <laughs> it, that's a broad term when you wow. say discrimination in terms of Let me when it comes you. to purchasing a home. During the last five years of Obama's presidency, mm -hmm. white home ownership went up, according to the internet, from 70 to 73 percent. So it raised three points. Mm. During the last five years of his presidency, black home ownership and certainly he wanted blacks to own homes, true? Mm -hmm. That was one of the things that he ran his campaign on. Yeah. So this isn't him, I'm just talking about what right. has happened. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, 47%, which was the highest ever that blacks owned home. Mm -hmm. They had never reached 47%, so they never got to half. It had dropped 1% a year over those five years down to 42 when he left. Wow. So you still had a 73% versus 42% mm. rate, and that just doesn't fit. Okay. There's still something wrong. Okay. And, and many times when, when black people will come in and we tell them this, they said, you mean I can really own a home today? You really can. Mm -hmm. They said, nobody in my family has ever owned a home. And I hear this often. Okay. Oh yeah, I can imagine that. Or I never hear it often. Being the first to go to college yes. in your family. Mm -hmm. So, but I guess I'm wondering what, where, where is the disconnect when, when they're trying to acquire a home? What are, they, what are they experiencing? I think they don't reach out to where they should reach out to because they've been told they're not going to be able to. I call it the downward spiral of despair. Mm -hmm. Once you start on a downward spiral and things seem to be falling down and falling down, not, that doesn't just affect you. That affects that next generation and that next generation. And so they've only seen what I would call failure in that financial world. And we want to help them not just succeed, in getting a home, but help them become financially solid in their life. Okay. And so there's a lot of avenues that we take with that. Credit cleanup. Okay. It's one of the yeah. things that we do. Yeah, and being educated about all that, and, and we, we can get into more detail about it, but yeah, I can relate to that. I um, quickly share a story how I would try to get modification, so I already own a home, and, and this was right after the Obama thing kicked in, and I called the bank to try to seek that modification. And first mm -hmm. of all, the bank didn't have a clue because it just got the program. Mm -hmm. But they kept giving me the runaround. Mm -hmm. And so I finally, and I knew I qualified because I had done my research. 
And so finally, I'm on the phone with these people, and uh, I said, you know, I'm going to start recording the conversations because every time I call, you tell me something different. And so they said, what are you doing, a story? So I don't know if they could see in front of me like I was a news reporter or what. And I said, no, I'm not doing a story. I'm just trying to get so I can play it back to the next person. And at that point, I was working in radio, so I can easily pull it up on my board, run it down the phone line. They can hear what Susie said last week because you keep changing your story. I got the biggest runaround. I don't know. Somebody called corporate. It got to the executive level, and somebody called me. That loan went through so fast, it'll make your head spin. And I kept telling them, I'm not doing a story. Wow. But that, so why would, did it go through? But it, I knew I qualified, but why wasn't it going through? Okay, so it, I've, I have certainly experienced that. I can't prove it was based on color, but I'm a little suspect because I eventually got the modification based mm -hmm. on the fear factor that they thought I was media. And I think everybody was scared at that time because everything was shifting and banks were being watched. Very uh, I know, close. I know there are a lot of studies being done that, there, that this does happen. So uh, let me ask you this. We're going to take a break. And we are going to talk to oh. Dr. Keenan. <laughs> She's I'm sitting here to... enjoying the conversation. <laughs> yes. But you, I know you work together in, yes. in other um, aspects of it. But um, if people um, are o able to overcome this, I, we're going to talk about maintaining that as well. Okay. Okay. Once, so we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll finish that. And we're going to talk to Dr. Keenan and about the bridge project when we come back. <laughs> And we're just continuing our discussion on homeownership and beyond. We have a couple of other things. We're talking to Dr. Annette Keenan, a prophetess and co-pastor of Christ, our healer ministries. And I promise you that she and I are going to have a discussion <laughs> on the show. We're just going to wrap up a few points here with uh, G. Brian Rogers, who is the co-founder of Chart Properties, LLC. We were talking about the issue of discrimination and um, the psychology of discrimination and Oftentimes, African Americans will claim that they've been discriminated against, and not always, but sometimes people will complain and say, well, that's just not true, or they don't want to hear it. What is that? Why is that the reaction? Because I don't, when people talk about the Holocaust, that's serious to me, and mm -hmm. I feel bad about it. Sure. I feel mm -hmm. bad for what happened to the Jewish people. So, and I don't think I could ever say, well, stop talking about that. That's, oh, who says that? Mm -hmm. When there's been such mm -hmm. a tragedy. So, when you, what a shame. considering the suffering that went along with slavery and so forth, why is that the reaction to say, you know, what, get over it maybe? I don't know. Well, Kelly, I don't think that you can. I don't think you can just get over it. I think it's something that we always acknowledge is there, okay? Mm -hmm. But... It's a perception issue with each individual person, mm -hmm. all right? I have a certain perception because of the life that I've had or where I've lived or, or things that have happened to me. I have a certain perception of those things. Well, there's certain perceptions I don't have because I haven't lived that. For instance, a woman versus a man. You Hello. know, you have a certain perception different than I would have as a man. The same thing would be true with race, right? A perception of somebody that's black is gonna be different than a perception of somebody that's white. Although we can see what they're saying if we will listen, mm. right? Mm. We can feel a little bit of what they feel from what they tell us, but we can't feel what they feel because we've not been there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the comparison uh, that I think that you and I had spoke on one time was about, have you lost your mom? No, then you can't understand what I went through when I lost my mom. Exactly. And so it's the same thing with these other things. And we're trying to get in their world to help them get through yeah. it. And I think maybe that's why in some places when people come together in certain cities and neighborhoods, a lot of that is the, the myths are dispelled because you actually have a chance to spend time with each other. Absolutely. And so you get, okay, now I can figure that out. But it's just a little frustrating for me sometimes. I could never figure out why mm -hmm. people are frustrated with that and you haven't even been there. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they wouldn't trade places with me. Yeah. 
which right. is the evidence right there. Okay, well, if you don't want to be me, then there still must be something wrong. And I just want to say this quickly about uh, slavery, that the, 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 the beatings and the abuse, that was just basically abuse. Mm -hmm. And we don't, when you think of child abuse, you don't think that, you don't say, oh, that just started today. You said that probably came from a grandmother's, grandmother's, grandfather, right? Grand, right? Mm -hmm. Two, five hundred years ago. But when it comes to slavery, you don't think that if you beat a man to the pulp, that that wouldn't be passed down to make his future generations violent, react violently. But we don't, see so what I'm saying? So we look at child yeah. abuse that way, but we don't think about human abuse that way. Right. And so some of that, what you're seeing in your communities is... And slavery is not that long ago, really. I mean, no. you could say, "Oh, my great grandfather was the son of a slave." Pretty, you know. So it's not it's not as far as back as people would want to. Mm -hmm. And then I just think people should embrace it on both sides in terms of if it had not been for them, mm -hmm. you would not have mm -hmm. some of the things you have today. You don't get two hundred years of free labor and be the greatest country in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put that up. Anyway, that's another <laughs> show. But <laughs> I, I, I want to go to Dr. Annette uh, Keenan. Uh, with co who's co-pastor of Christ, our healer ministries, you two team together on the bridge. What's the bridge? Yes. Take us to the bridge. <laughs> Take you to the, <laughs> like James Brown, right? <laughs> uh, it's a transitional home uh, right now. And by the end of the year, we want to have at least 150 people uh, in beds, uh, people that have been incarcerated, people that have, uh, as the world always say, have, have fallen down on their luck. Mm -hmm. Uh, we house them and we're training them, um, training them even where chart is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, those that uh, 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 need education and different things of that sort. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to, it's an awesome program. Wow. Yes. Okay, so you partner together. So she feed you, some of the people just come through your door, you feed people as well from that direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, what would you say in your experience in terms of these the people who you're dealing with how how did what's going on with them and how did they get there is it some of the same um, discriminatory issues that we talked about earlier? yes well some of them are and and there again some of them they came from as we were talking about you guys were talking about earlier they came from backgrounds of of, of rejection and prejudice and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So it's just a, a conglomerate of many things, the people that uh, we interview that are eligible for our program. Okay. Yes. So, so how can somebody take advantage of the program, the Bridge Project? Uh, well, they can call, they can call our church and the number is area code 317-784-8957 and we can run them through and give them information uh, and, and see where they are, what the need is. That's the most important thing that we're looking for because a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's important that you really have a, a serious need for that type of program and not something just to be, to get over on because we're serious about helping the people. Mm. Yes. Okay. Now, the, the church, your church ministry itself, let's talk about the mission of your church. Yes. And that's, is a, that's a part of that, right? Yes. Uh, uh, our church is Christ our Healer. Uh, ministries, um, and uh, uh, we, um, we're we there to, uh, well, let me put it this way, we're concerned about families. Mm. Our whole mission statement is centered around healing the family, and when we talk about healing, most of the time when you say healing, people automatically think in terms of physical but healing is in so many categories, mentally, emotionally. Mm. Uh, you know, we, you talked about abuse and all of that. Uh, and so we, we really target those people, uh, families, those that have come from broken homes, those that have been rejected, abandoned uh, in some part of their life. So we target our ministry around helping those people uh, uh, as a part of, of them knowing who they are as well as knowing about the love of Christ. Amen. That's yes. beautiful. Okay. Yes. Okay. So when you two come together on, on the chart tip, so to speak, how does that all work? Well, let me tell you to preempt that what mm -hmm. the mission statement of the church is, and then you can see how that fits with the mission statement of chart. Okay. It's real simple. I'm going to read it to you. To provide information to all people how to turn their hearts back to God, live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and learn how to walk in the power and authority that He did. Mm. Okay? So there's a teaching element of being spiritually right. We want people to get right three ways. We want to help them to get right spiritually. We want them to help them get right in their financial world. Mm. That includes employment. 
you know, we can help people get jobs. Mm -hmm. We've put people on at Subaru this week. We've got uh, an agreement to get people on there. That's, that's not just a J-O-B, it's a career. Wow. Right? And because, you know, to just go get a minimum wage job doesn't solve the problem. Right. They've yeah. got to get something mm -hmm. that's career based. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, for them to get into home ownership. And so Chart Properties acquires the building, we get it ready, and then with Christ Our Healer Ministries, that's where the bridge comes together for us to be able to help make that happen for everybody. Okay. Okay. So um, somebody who's watching now, and we, and of course, we started off talking about home ownership and how to get there. If someone is watching, give the scenarios that, or the different um, scenarios where you help people. Okay. Yeah. So because they may be, okay, how do I fit into, or how can I capitalize on that? Very good. I wonder if I qualify. Very yeah. good. A person could be coming from homelessness, literally from the street. You remember the local media here recently, Tent City had no place to go. Oh, All yeah. All the homeless people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Chart properties, put them on a piece of land that we had. Um, the mayor didn't even know it until he was speaking at the same event I was at IMA a month ago. And he said, oh, you guys are the ones that did that. Oh, wow. And so we provided a place for them to go, but they could only go if their desire was to end up owning a home. They, if their life was to stay in that, we couldn't uh -huh. help them because okay. we're not trying to make this a permanent place for right. encourage homelessness. Mm -hmm. We want mm -hmm. to stop homelessness. Right. You're and right. so that is one of the things that we do in order okay. to do that. Okay. Okay. So if somebody was watching homelessness, is, that's one of them. One of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some other scenarios that they're, they're coming from incarceration. Okay. Divorce. When mm. divorce happens, they got a combined income. Mm -hmm. Both of those incomes allow you to be able to make this house payment. When you get divorced, those two incomes now are going two different directions and usually neither party can keep the house. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we will buy that home from the divorcing party, sell each of them a home in the price range they can afford while we then get rid of this home and then get them financed on the new one. Wow, amazing. Death, mm -hmm. you inherit a home. It's great you inherited the home, mom and dad, you know, you've lost them. That part's not great, mm -hmm. but you inherited the home. That's great. Problem is maybe they still have a mortgage on it. <laughs> And property taxes. And property <laughs> taxes and utilities. And so we'll take that off of their hands, take over all the expenses immediately, and then we have a process that we do that. And, uh, and that way they don't have that expense, and then that equity that they're waiting on, they'll get when it actually finally closes. That's beautiful. It could That's be beautiful. any number of reasons why somebody doesn't own a home, and whatever that is. Just graduated yeah. from high school, graduated from college, need to go do it. Okay. Yeah. How can people contact you? They can contact us really two solid ways. Mm -hmm. They can call the office at 317-965-4815. Okay. And, uh, and just tell them, hey, I need to own a home. And there's going to be a lot of people talk to them, okay. right? Or they can also just go to chartproperties.com. Okay, chartproperties.com. And they can make application on there. The application is one sheet of paper. Okay, okay. So Pretty complex, huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you two work together. You do a radio show? We do. Yes. Okay. We and do two radio shows. Two, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're on 1310 uh, AM at 1130 uh, every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, and then we're also on jhmradio.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're on there Monday through Friday as well from yeah. 9 to 930 live. It's a call-in show. You can call in, ask questions. And yes. Okay. Get prayer, get whatever you need. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you both for coming in, Brian Rogers and Dr. Keenan, for joining us here on Indi uh, Inside Indiana. And we appreciate all the information and enlightening us and informing us. Yes. This has been so good. Yes. We thank certainly you. appreciate you inviting us. Yes. Yeah, thanks for coming. And thank you for watching. I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.